The award for best overall soundtrack goes to the game with a collection of killer original music. While it won't be receiving the award, I do want to shout out Fire Emblem Warriors 3 Hopes for giving us some incredible new arrangements for music from Fire Emblem 3 Houses. Pacing Daybreak is a personal favorite of mine. In Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Shredder's Revenge, Elopes brings back classic flair in a modern update. The use of the orchestra hit effect adds a nice punch that calls back to the turtle's early years, but the soundtrack truly comes together with its touches of rock and punk, the latter of which has members of the Wu-Tang Clan as contributors. And it wouldn't be a true T. Lopes masterpiece without a funky bass backing up each and every track. The soundtrack for Stray has all the qualities that usually go against my personal preference. I wouldn't say most of the tracks deliver on a memorable melody, and the instrumentation isn't particularly grand, but it's not supposed to be. I was surprised to find as I played the game it nearly cracked my top three soundtracks of the year. When you enter a building and a new lo-fi song kicks in, it transports you. There are also a few standout tracks hidden away with an optional NPC collecting sheet music, one of which even made the cut for Jeff Keighley's Game Awards Orchestra medley. To put it in terms that fit with the game, there is one cool cat behind this music. Prepare your tomatoes comment section because I'm about to say Xenoblade Chronicles 3 did not have the best soundtrack of the year. This is personal taste, and I'm still featuring it in my top three. But it still might come as a shock given the proclivity of the soundtracks in past Xenoblade games. Again, this is still a good soundtrack. The unique monster battle theme is actually my favorite in the whole Xenoblade series. There are new types of enemies that introduce even more battle themes, each of which hit hard. The instrument featured most prominently is the flute. The team at Monolith Soft actually went to the trouble of creating custom flutes in order to give the soundtrack a more unique sound. What keeps this from being my top soundtrack is something I mentioned when talking about Stray. I gravitate towards memorable melodies and enjoy when games have had plenty of bombastic or high-octane pieces, yet something danceable. While Xenoblade 3 has some songs like that, much of the soundtrack this time around is more subdued, with areas giving the sense they're frozen in time. Some of my favorite area tracks are rearrangements of songs from Xenoblade 1 and 2, though it also doesn't feel fair to give Xenoblade 3 as much credit for them. Now if you want the best RPG soundtrack of the year, it has to go to my runner-up, Triangle Strategy. The soundtrack is headed by composer Akira Senju, whose previous work includes the soundtrack to Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. The game boasts a full orchestra with militaristic might. The percussion is deep and booming. Between the short, simultaneous bursts of brass and the swelling of sustained strings, it always feels like you have a full army at your command. The game makes excellent use of motifs, many of which can be heard in the main theme on the title screen, while still giving its track a unique identity from each other. Each time the instrumentation varies, it creates a new sensational sound, whether it dips into hard rock for an eventful boss battle, or allows metallic instruments to reverberate through the walls of a cave. While there was a lot of contention for the soundtrack award this year, it can only go to one game, and the game I chose is... Sonic Frontiers. I gravitate towards memorable melodies that make me move my body to the beat, and while Triangle Strategy did a good job of delivering on that front, it just can't match the sheer volume of Sonic Frontier's soundtrack. The game delivers a myriad of gems, and I'm not just referring to the Chaos Emerald. The tracks can be broken up into categories based on where they play in the game, thus giving the overall soundtrack four distinctive sounds. The BGM that plays when Sonic is exploring the Starfall Islands overworld is led by a different instrument for each island. For the first island, you'll hear a combination of piano and string instruments. While the music is soft, it weaves in repeated phrases and expands on them, thus striking a balance between memorable and non-invasive. Later islands use more percussion, reflective of the story's increasing tension. Second is the game's cyberspace levels. The soundtrack takes a full turn towards electronic to match the digital biosphere, which is quite the oxymoron. Each level has its own theme, and each of them is a bop. 
the songs combine lo-fi instruments with frantic beats and in some cases, hints of vocal. It's like being at a Sonic-themed nightclub. Across the overworld are a smattering of mini-bosses. Each of their themes dials up the symphonics that we heard in the overworld BGM, while also bringing in some of the electronic elements from the cyberspace tracks. It makes sense for the two to come together here, as we find ourselves fighting a mechanical monstrosity amidst the same overworld we were just exploring. And finally, there are the proper boss fights. This is where the music team created a slew of brand new vocal rock tracks for the game, and not just from one band. You'll hear a few voices that each bring a distinct tone to their boss fight. The instrumentation goes hard to fall in line with Sonic contending with a barrage of ballistics from each island's titan, for not only delivering a variety of genres, but ensuring each of them sounded amazing, Sonic Frontiers earns the award for Best Soundtrack of 2022.